equation will become the last equation on the screen. All right, the next slides that we have, I want to explain to you this way. If you take a look in figure three, on the horizontal axis, it shows you small f, which is a frequency. And on the vertical axis, it shows you, let's say, the value of the function f hat corresponding to a certain frequency, index k. So, for example, if you take a look on the figure, at this point right here, the frequency is delta f. At this point right here, the frequency is 2 delta f. Here, the frequency is 3 delta f, blah, 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 and so on. So in general, at any location like this one, the frequency is equal to k times delta f. Now, corresponding to the frequency equal to delta f, the function value is equal to, let's say, this much. f hat equal to that much. Corresponding to the frequency 2 delta f, the function f hat, let's say, equal to this much. So in general, corresponding to the frequency equal to k delta f, the function value f hat is equal to this much. Now you can see corresponding to the frequency k delta f, k delta f, that refer to a particular frequency f. So in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is k delta f, k delta f, that represent a certain frequency f. Okay? So with k delta f to be considered is at the frequency f, then the previous formula that you see on the previous slide, so you can see the last equation there, when you take the limit of delta f approach to zero, then you know it, in the limit, the summation will become the integral. So the summation now become the integral. That's the first thing. And also, if you look on the previous slide, in the limit, you have delta f, delta f approach to zero. When delta f approach to zero, that is the same thing like saying delta f become df. And then if you compare to the last equation on the previous slide, after that you have f hat i k 2 pi delta f times e raised to the power i k 2 pi delta f t, the remaining term is exactly show you right here. That is the remaining term. So now, that equation is rewritten in a more nicer form. Actually, the same thing there here. The only thing we did, the only thing we did is we just rewrite the previous equation in a different form, and that equation is shown in right here. So right now we are at this point. The non-periodic function fnp can be expressed as the integral of f hat i 2 pi f e i 2 pi f t d f. Now, at this point, what we can do is from this e class equation, we can multiply by 2 pi. We multiply by 2 pi, and then we divide by 2 pi, so nothing will happen. We multiply by 2 pi, and we divide by 2 pi. Okay? Now, remember, 2 pi times f is the same thing as omega naught. So that term right there can be expressed as indicated on the next slide. But remember now, 2 pi f is the same thing as omega naught. You see? That is exactly what I told you. 
instead of 2 pi f, we just say omega naught. And when you multiply that, you have to divide by 2 pi, like I told you on the previous slide. Okay? So, to summarize it, up to now, we say a non-periodic function, f and p, can be given by the expression as shown on the slide right here. 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of the function f hat of i omega naught. Oh, by the way, why you have here f hat i omega naught? The reason is because you compare to the previous slide, and you can see very clearly 2 pi f, 2 pi f is the same thing as omega naught. So you're supposed to have the term like f hat of i omega naught. And that is exactly what you have right here, you see? That's exactly what you have right there. Now, using the same definition that we have earlier for the function f hat, you can see that the function f hat should be defined as this, based on the definition that I talked to you earlier. Well, in case you forgot, in case you forgot, you can remember, you can, I can remind you about the definition of the function f hat, okay? The function f hat is defined in equation one, okay? The function f hat is defined in equation one, which is i k omega naught, okay? So, this definition, I say c equation 1. So using the definition shown in equation 1, f hat of i omega naught is defined like this. So what you have right now to summarize it, you have a pair of the formula. The first one gives you the function non-periodic expressed in terms of f hat, and the second one give you the formula for f hat. Actually, you can see the first equation, basically, we call it inverse Fourier transform. Why you have inverse Fourier transform? Because you can transform a function from the frequency domain, f hat, into, into the time domain. Whereas in the second formula, you have a formula to transform from the time domain into the frequency domain, okay? So in, in, in the last equation, you have a Fourier transform formula to transform from the time domain to the frequency domain. And the previous equation transformed from the frequency domain back to the time domain. So that's why I call inverse Fourier transform. And that is the end of this lecture. Here's the acknowledgement.